Thanks. Where's my intern? Okay, <laughs> guys, we're live. <laughs> I got a, I got a team, guys. I got a team. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, I'm getting it. a, I'm getting a foot massage right now. Hold on. Hey, Son I'm of a bitch. <laughs> guys, that did I mention we're live? Not that's not all that's going on out of camera view. Did I mention we're live? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you all for uh, for viewing the film and for the initial feedback. Trying to corral these guys kind of uh, prevent me from seeing all of them, but uh, I'm sure I will see them eventually, and thank you so much for that. <clears throat> much like what I did with my Western Time screenings, I wanted to use it as an, an excuse to kind of bring the community together. It was probably my favorite thing about <laughs> those screenings. So, um, yeah, to, to do this, um, to have all the talent that we have on this panel is fantastic. So uh, my gratitude to you guys and for participating in the film, really. Um, a couple of things I wanted to get off uh, or talk about right off the bat. The I, I did want to when I put films like this, and you'll see it. You've seen it in Lake Sonoma. You've seen it with the the Sean O'Brien films. I like telling the complete story, and I really wanted to find a way to incorporate uh, telling the women's side of the race as well. And there were some fantastic races that went on. Unfortunately, um, the couple of camera people that I reached out to. Uh, weren't able to accommodate me, and you know, it being kind of an out-of-town race, it was a lot more difficult. So, you know, congrats to Magda and Stephanie and and um, Megan. Who placed second? Megan Kimmel. Megan. Thank you. Killed it. Um, and I wanted to do a quick shout out. Uh, thank you to Simple Hydration, who whose product I use and love, and uh, they're supporting this little show. Um, all the fellows will get one. Maybe we'll do a giveaway at the end of the show. So uh, my thanks to Brian at Simple Hydration for uh, creating a fantastic product. Great stuff. Um, so you guys don't need to hear me talk. Eric, why don't you kind of introduce the panel who we have on and do a quick uh, overview of the film. Yeah, sounds good. Um, I'm Eric Schranz. I'm a host of OpenerPodcast.com. Um, Alex, are you eating chips or something? <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> if you know, if you know URP, thanks for checking it out. If you don't, stop on by for uh, interviews, product reviews, beer news, and uh, the URP daily news. So, first, I need to uh, I need to thank Billy for including me in this project. Um, you know, as as this ultra trail world grows, new areas of the sport pop up, and Billy's really at the forefront of uh, of, of trail films that tell you know a, a narrative while showing really cool. Trails, um, while making the sport exciting to watch, it's not always exciting to watch people run for 8, 10, 12, 14 hours, and it makes it pretty interesting. Um, I was with him on Saturday at the race, and my job consisted of pushing um, record on some of his uh, stationary cameras um, while he sacrificed life and limb chasing these guys through the mud at six-minute pace um, before he jumped into a van and sped off to the next uh, next aid station. Um, so really, since since Billy's been uh, been locked in the studio finalizing the, the 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 final cut of this film, he's asked me to introduce the cast of characters. And uh, first up is uh, is Timothy Olson. Um, after uh, easily described as a tough year of racing and a crazy <clears throat> traveling around the world with his family, um, Timothy went into this race uh, with a real emotional mindset. Um, if you haven't read his recent post about the race, I'd urge you to check it out on his site. I've linked to it as well. Um, Race-wise, we watched Timothy run with the uh, the second pack for a while, then slowly work his way up in the second half of the race, picking off the speedsters as the uh, the miles went on. It was awesome. Timothy runs for the North Face, and he's joined us from uh, his new digs in uh, in Boulder, Colorado. Hi there, Tim. How's it going? Next up, uh, I've got Dylan Bowman finished um, finished this race in 2012 and uh, fifth last year, grabbing a third place at Western States since then. Um, he also won Sean O'Brien 50 miler earlier this year against a real competitive field, and in a race I described as, as has a lot of similarities to uh, to, to North Face. Uh, Dylan looked measured and solid this this year, and it was he was actually my bet to win the whole dang thing. Lost 20 bucks. Um, Dylan runs for the North Face and is joining us from Mill Valley, California, just a very very few <coughs> miles from the uh, Marin Headlands Trailhead. Debo, how you doing? Good, Eric. Sorry to, uh, to blow it for you on that. <laughs> yeah, you, you um, owe him. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Alex, Alex Varner um, made his uh, made his mark at Lake Sonoma this year, coming in fourth in his debut 50-miler. 
then took a seventh place at his debut 100 mile at Western States. Um, Alex comes into the sport with a real strong collegiate and road background and is uh, very, very quickly making his mark as a, uh, as a fast guy up front. Throughout the day, Alex looked really good, but uh, you know we knew he had some problems. He said that he was out of gels for an hour or two, which is never a good sign. But he rallied and and recovered. Alex runs for the Nor uh, runs for Nike Trail Elite and is joining us from San Francisco. Alex, how are you doing? Alexander, I'm sorry, how are you doing? <laughs> good, thanks, Eric. I was with your folks after the race, and they corrected me a few times that your name is in fact. Alexander. So, yes. uh, then I spoke with uh, with Tim Tollefson a few short months ago on URP, and uh, he was considering running North Face for his first 50. Um, by the looks of things, he had the most fun of anyone out there. I mean, blasting into the finish shoot with this huge smile on his face, um, a, a rad mud unibrow, and and the feeling that he wanted more. I mean, it really looked like he had a blast, and he wanted to get back out there, even though he wore slippery road flats for an extremely muddy 50 miler. Um, Tim's got a 218 marathon PR, runs for Nike Trail Elite, and is joining us from his mountain lair in Mammoth Lakes, California. Tim, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome. Finally, Sage Kennedy. Um, this year, Sage won Tarawera in New Zealand, took a third at the hyper-competitive Lake Sonoma 50-miler, took a big win at Speed Goat 50K, and a second to Killian at the Rut 50K in Montana. Um, on Saturday, Sage led... After about 10 miles, um, he looked kind of rough at Stinson Beach. Around mile 39, he got passed by Dakota, barfed a lot, then rallied, and absolutely killed it in the last 10 miles, and uh, eventually broke the tape with a healthy cushion. Um, this was his first time racing these trails, and he came into it as one of the, the main favorites, if not the favorite. Sage runs for Hoka, and is joining us from, uh, from Boulder. Sage, how you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Awesome. So, um, Phyllis, thanks for joining us. Um, Timothy, I'm gonna Olson. I'm gonna start with you. Um, it's it's been it's been a week and a half since the race. Come on, Alex. Come Alex, on. Alex. Can we talk about the the literal elephant in the room <laughs> <laughs> notching on peanuts over there? Wow, Alex. I'm so hungry. <laughs> but Timothy, it's um, it's been a week and a half since the race. Um, your your I'm, I'll call it your emotional report really told a tale of your your journey this year, culminating in your performance last weekend. And I think I think um, Billy's movie really, at least to me, really showed it well. At the end, you just stood there with a, a, a very deliberate look on your face, hands on your knees, just standing there kind of saying, thank God that's over. <laughs> you know, yeah. you did a great job at the race, but it looked like you were saying, thank God that's over. Um, have you had time to reflect? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, definitely a challenging race. And... Um... I, you know, just the competition definitely brought that, um, the slick mud and everything with that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think he really caught um, my emotion at the end there. Just, um, you know, relief having that done. But just, uh, you know, what I think a lot of us use a trail for is just to work through some things and, um, you know, come out of it uh, with a better perspective. And that's kind of what the, the race was for me. And it's just, it's been a... You know, it's been a challenging year of sorts. I think every year has its, you know, its ups and downs, and um, yeah, and you just gotta keep learning how to ride those. And um, I, I didn't have a, ch a really good chance to to write about it or talk about my UTMB experience and just kind of the year. And I was just kind of in a little bit of funk of not knowing what to 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 write about or to get it out in a, um, you know, in a in a way that I felt. Um, you know, uh, spoke to how my emotions were feeling, and uh, just had a good afternoon where I just kind of started typing down some stuff and got out a little bit um, just from the year, and it was really a good chance to to kind of let that out. And I'm more so I, I always really appreciate writing stuff just kind of for my own benefit of just kind of writing, getting some getting some emotions out, and yeah. and uh, it's nice to to share that with uh, such a loving community and people that just uh, seem to be really caring and um, you know really uh, is really good to hear all the nice com comments and stuff about um, my report and just uh, the year in general. Did did you think, um, what were your expectations going into it? I mean, I, I, I know I, I read your piece. Were you thinking you could win this? Were you thinking, God, I just want to finish this, get the hell of the season over with? Um, really, oh. wh where were you really, really in your head thinking how, how I was going to go? Yeah, I, I'm pretty good at always in my head thinking that I can pull off a win. I, you know, I feel like all, all of us um, as runners that are just, you know, giving it all out there want to, you know, push ourselves to the best. And I, you know, I definitely um, thought I could, um, you know, lay it all out, out there that day. 
Um, I didn't know where my um, where my fitness was exactly just because I haven't raced for a while and definitely nothing uh, that speed and there was a good amount of climbing but uh, you know what I've been doing there um, yeah. I've been doing a lot more hiking so this was definitely all out running and I thought I had a nice little um, um, you know block of training but I, I knew it wasn't anything like I had like a month and a half to really train for this race so it wasn't <laughs> really a lot and um, you know, I just kind of, I came out there to let it all out, and I knew there was, like, so many amazing athletes that I, I, I in my in my heart, I knew that, like, you know, Sage would, would take it away, and there wasn't really much I could do about that, but, uh, you know, I'm going to keep working at it and, and uh, um, see if I can get a little faster for those type of races. Yeah, good job, man. Um, let's move on to Tim so we can hit all the guys. Uh, Tim Tollefson, first 50-mile race, third ultra I believe. How was your day? It, it was good. I would say all in all, it was a successful, successful outing. Yeah, I mean, like to reiterate what <laughs> what Eric noticed, and uh, I think what a lot of us did chasing you guys around. It seemed like you were having a blast out there, man. It was. It, uh, going in, I I <clears throat> I definitely wanted to be real competitive, and I was hoping to maybe crack that podium. You know, even though it was a long shot, but. After a few learning experiences or kind of mid-race, uh, I guess, uh, encounters with things I didn't expect, it, uh, I sort of shifted my focus to really trying to learn from the rest of the race and make the most out of it. And I think I shifted more of my focus also towards just enjoying the moment while I was out there on the trails and uh, running further than I'd ever run in my life. So all in all, what it were those, was definitely... Yeah, what I, were those things you didn't expect? <clears throat> um... I would say the first one was with my marathoning, I've always taken an approach of emotional control where I try not to, you know, really blow my load in the first 15, 20 miles like most people do. And so I was hoping to do that in the 50 mile as well, but perhaps I did it a little too much where I had a lot kind of in reserves, but I really didn't know what to expect. So once I realized that the race had run away from me, I, I sort of then focused more on, okay, what can I do and what can I learn from these last 15 miles where wow. I knew Sage and all of those guys were, they, they kicked my ass and they were, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes ahead of me and then I, there was no way I could make that up. And then when you threw in also the, uh, the mud section on whatever those switchbacks were, I, I really kind of had to refocus <laughs> on just staying upright. <laughs> And uh, so that was, I mean, it was kind of comical, but at the same time, it was pissing me off because, you know, it, it was taking my competitive legs out from underneath me. And when Jorge yep. passed me, he, you know, he was kind of just joking as he pranced on by. And, and I just thought, damn it. And, like, this was a, a terrible miscalculation on my part. But uh, so I, I think those were probably the two big things. Uh, real quick, by the way, um, for those watching, I know the chat is not enabled. Uh, guys, feel free to leave a comment as we're going along, and if I see, if you guys have questions specifically for the guys on the panel, I will try to get to them at some point during the show. Billy, is that what the, the comment tracker is on the right-hand side of our screen? Is that where we're going to see comments? No, that's just for us. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Okay. Um, I got a question for, for Alex. I want to hit uh, Alexander Varner. Um, as... Um, as second 50 miler, both crazy competitive races. I mean, going after Lake Sonoma and this, you're just hitting like the most competitive 50 milers in the country, really. Um, what'd you learn this time? Um, I need more goose. <laughs> 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 um, that would that would have helped, I think. I don't think it would. I don't think it made much of a difference. Um, it was just more of kind of a, a probably a mental kind of safety blanket sort of just to keep taking them and you know it might have helped a little bit but I think kind of where I was at that later on in the race when I didn't have them um, it didn't make a huge difference um, and then from the two that I've run uh, Lake Sonoma and North Face uh, both of them had guys go off the front relatively early and stay away the whole time um, and seeing that um, doesn't necessarily give me ideas, but it certainly makes me realize, like, maybe in these more competitive ones, we should start respecting the guy who goes out the front and uh, chase him down a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I know we talked a lot about in the week leading up to this and some of the, the pre-interviews I did about people getting Zach Millard, like, like what happened at Lake Sonoma. Like you're saying, yeah. somebody runs off front and ah, he's not going to make it out front. That guy's not going to stay there. 
and then he did. And uh, yeah. this looks like it went out slower. I was expecting you, Alex, to go out screaming fast, and it didn't look like you guys went out as fast as you could have. How how was that pace for the first five or ten miles? Um, completely manageable, I think. You know, we were talking and joking and laughing at Tim's shoes, and I have been carrying his <laughs> lunch bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the first two loops were, were really mellow, uh, Bobcat and Down Rodeo, um, and that's kind of how I wanted it to go. I knew, uh, I didn't hear about the course change going up Steep Ravine instead of up Dipsy until Jorge told me at mile 20, um, <laughs> and I didn't believe him, so <laughs> we got there and I was, I was kind of hoping that we would go up Dipsy because I know that trail really well, and... I was planning on kind of making a move at the top of the at the top of the stairs coming out of Steep Ravine, um, but that's why I was that's kind of why I was holding back and waiting to see how it developed. Um, but I think as it, as it happened, um, it kind of split up at Cardiac way earlier than I thought, and we were all everybody just kind of uh, got broken into twos and threes, and that's kind of where it stayed and just filtered out from there. Did you have a, a hard time? Um... Uh, making any moves with the back and forth of the 50Kers and the other the other 50 milers? Uh, no, they were pretty good. Uh, I didn't have anybody kind of particularly in my way or out of my way. I had a couple people apologize. Um, I think you know they just assumed that if they were coming up at us, they were in our way. But no, no one person sticks out. I didn't, you know, I was lucky enough sure. where I didn't didn't fall. And yeah, they did they did a pretty good job. So it wasn't wasn't much of an issue. Um, the trail was was rough either way. Yeah. Yeah, look yeah, like I it. mean it. Uh, Debo, moving on to you. Um, you placed fifth, and I know you mentioned it in the video. You probably it would have taken a real ideal day for you to podium or or win the race. But is there any disappointment now in a fifth place finish in that field, or do you have, when you play out the race? How do you? What, what's your feeling? Are you are you just sad? Or are you happy? Or are you disappointed? No, Billy, that's a great question and, and something that I've kind of thought about a lot, and I think it speaks to sort of how I've developed as a runner in the last 12 months. You know, last year, in 2013, when I finished fifth, I was extremely happy with my race, uh, be, even though, you know, I was 15 minutes behind Rob Crar. I was coming off a little bit of an ankle injury, and that was really my, my first race back in real true health um, and then this year having the same result fifth place and also being 15 minutes back of the lead to be honest it was a little bit disappointing I wanted to do a little bit better than uh, than I did that being said to have a podium performance or to have your your best performance at the North Face 50 mile championship you really can't make many mistakes and you know, I made made some mistakes, and um, you know, there's no no excuse. You know, I, I ran as hard and as well as I possibly could that day, but when uh, you know you make one small oversight, it then you know it it shows itself at the end of the race and in, in how far you are from from the leader. So you know, overall, I'm I'm super happy with my season. I'm really happy. Overall, with with my race at uh, the North Face 50, I you know it's sort of one of those races where it could have gone better, it could have gone worse. Um, so fifth place, I mean, in that field, um, you know, certainly I'll take that any day. Um, but that being said, you know, you try and run a perfect race every time, and it rarely happens. But that's always the goal, and and when it's not, there is a certain degree of of disappointment, I guess. Yeah. Dylan, did, did you know um, in front of you was uh, was Tofel Castagna from uh, from Spain, and in six behind you was Ricky Lightfoot from from UK. Two faces um, who a lot of people didn't recognize. I mean, everybody recognized everybody else on this panel. Those guys, not everybody did. Were you familiar with them, with their racing, their racing style? Did you know them personally? No, I don't know either of them personally. Definitely familiar with who they are. I'm an avid sport enthusiast and somebody who follows basically all endurance sports so as as a fan I had heard their names I know their you know results TOEFL more so than Ricky um, I did notice he's a large man like myself which I yeah. 
found to be, uh, you know, we have sort of kindred spirits out there. But, uh, yeah, Toffel, I mean, he's a, he's a legit world-class guy on the scene, finishing second at UTMB. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, I think he's like 42 years old. Um, Is he really? Really, really? really impressive <laughs> guy. Um, and, yeah, we had a little bit of a battle there at the end. Um, in fact, I passed him there near the top of Steep Ravine, actually when um, I got around Tim Tollefson as well. And then that's when I sort of made, made, my, uh, made my error and, and he got away from me and then I was planning a, a kamikaze chase down at the end, but um, I didn't, didn't have the legs to, uh, to actually execute. So uh, yeah, both those guys are, are studs and I'm glad they came out. Is there? You, you said you're a uh, you're you're a fan of all endurance sports. Is there a person in endurance sports with a better name than Ricky Lightfoot? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to think about it, but that's a yeah. good name. It's it's like the best name you could possibly have. I, I think, think. You know, I think Dakota Jones is. Like, yeah, totally. It's it's, it's a like, little porny. Dakota like, Jones is kind of porny, but wild yeah. wild yeah. west. <laughs> I personally think Kenny's a pretty good name. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Sage, I want to I talk to talk, talk you a little bit, just a question. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Um, you, you, you told me at the end that that was the first time you puked in a race. Um, I mean, I've puked in races. I think a lot of people have puked in races. What caused you to puke, and what are you going to do to prevent that in the future? Um, actually, there was a marathon. When I first uh, qualified for the Olympic trials in 2007, that marathon, I had like 13 seconds to spare, and I, right after I crossed the finish line, I puked all over, and uh, they brought out a wheelchair, and I got wheeled away to the medical tent. Uh, so I, I did puke, like, right after races. What um, the hell is that? Is, is Alex doing his dishes? Alex is his game. <laughs> You hear everything I'm doing? Someone get ready. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of background noise. God damn it. All right, I'll wait. In our little internal <laughs> chat. Hey, Alex, put your pants on. Yeah. <laughs> I have pants on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't um, when I so got yeah, up. But... I puked after a race, but uh, this this time I actually really let it out during the race. And it was right it was right before Dakota caught me. I was actually coming down that muddy section at Heather's Cutoff, and all the 50K runners are coming up head on at me. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, encourage them and not crash into people and here I'm trying to also hold back my puke face because I'm really nauseous and uh, I let it out in front of someone that's for sure uh, but I was puttering <laughs> along that whole section and the mud definitely didn't help I think I, I accidentally crashed into someone too I couldn't break in time and uh, the 50k runners were really polite though they, they were really encouraging and they got out of the way and uh, but yeah it was it was kind of embarrassing because I, I really let it out and I, I didn't feel good after that for a while uh, so I just stopped taking in calories for a while, but it was mainly too much sugar, I think. Sandy and oh, I eat post so healthy okay. now. Uh, you know, we, we're not used to, I'm not used to taking all this refined sugar, and I was burning it so hot, I was like, I need to drink Coke starting at mile 16, and so I was just downing all this Coke, and I never drink soda ever, uh, okay. except on airplanes sometimes, but uh, it was just too much too soon, and when you're burning it hot, I mean, all the blood goes to your legs, basically, and so you're probably going to get some GI distress, so it's, it's kind of par for the course, but uh, it was kind of uh, annoying. <laughs> hey, Sage, was there any uh, puking at the post-race drink fest at the Deuce? Not from me. I don't know. For other people, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get to stay that long. I mean, how sauced did people get? I mean... <laughs> I think, I think you'd have to ask uh, Alex on that. <laughs> <laughs> we were the last ones there from 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 the party, but is that right? Who were I think so. We were only there till like twelve forty-five. Was there anybody who partied like to the point where you you were actually surprised by how well they were putting it down? Mm, not particularly. All right. I mean, Ricky, Alex. Gates, Ricky Gates, he'll never be surprised with his partying prowess, but apparently he took the Solomon contingent into the city to go dancing <laughs> after the beers. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, under his problem. leadership. <laughs> yeah, under his leadership, really anybody can party. <laughs> hey, Timmy, uh, Tim, uh, you, uh, you've obviously had a 
very, very trying, very um, challenging 2014. Uh, wh what are some of the things you're looking forward to in 2015? Um, yeah, just I guess just getting after it again. Um, I'm, right now I'm just taking a break and then um, looking forward to getting back into some training and just seeing, I don't know what I'm going to race next year, so I've been kind of like playing around with some things and trying to figure out where I'm going to go, and um, <laughs> which is an awesome, you know, experience to be able to like figure out, oh, I can go to this place, this place, that place. There's so many amazing races um, and countries to visit. So, um, yeah, I, had, I don't know what's next for next year, but I'm just kind of looking forward to getting back into some training, uh, having the coaching, uh, helping with that, of just maybe doing a little faster stuff and maybe work on a little bit of shorter distance um, to just try to work on the speed. Um, more still, I, I still like to aim for the hundreds. I, I just prefer that for race distance, but um, it's nice to work on some speed um, that I, I don't always have. Do you uh, do you see yourself going after the Western States Montreal Trail Cup slot? Um, nope. <laughs> uh, not not for this year. Um, I'll I'll get back to there eventually, but. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep trying some other things, um, and then I'll, I'll wait till uh, you know someone takes that down uh, this year or next year or whatever, and then maybe try to go after it again. Timmy, Timmy kind of uh, elated. He he won two in a row, and then he just kind of dropped the mic and uh, walked away. Yeah, it uh, it seemed like the thing to do. I like you know I I, I got that race. Um, you know, dialed into the best of my ability, and um, I I like it, but. I, I really kind of like that humbling experience of the mountains, and um, they they beat the shit out of me. So I'm looking forward to kind of you know taking some more of that. Hey, uh, um, Tim, uh, other other Tim, Tim Tollefson. Um, uh, back to the fun you look like you were having out there. Um, looking back on it, if you had another 10 miles to go, make it at 100k. 11 miles to go, make it at 100k. You would have been cool with that. I mean, you really look like you were having a lot of fun and came in with a lot of energy. Is that a fair assessment? If it had finished with another 11 miles on the road, yeah, I, I would have been, <laughs> been cool with that. But uh, if you had one more mud puddle, I, I would have thrown up the white flag. So uh, yeah, I I think uh, I could have. I think I would have enjoyed a few more miles. Um, although when I heard there was a course change and they made it 51 miles versus 50, I was kind of ticked off because I was thinking, I'm doing my first 50 miler now. I'm doing my first 51 miler. By the time we're done, I'm going to do like 65. So I wasn't sure where it was going to end, but yeah. Any interest in going in going longer now, or do you like that distance? Do you want to? What's your feeling on the uh, on the ultra distances? I'd like to try and master the 50 mile distance, um, maybe 100k, but no 100 milers for me anytime soon. So he says. So he says. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Devo, what are you gonna do? Um, are you gonna add any any new kind of workouts? I mean, I know you do a lot of intense workouts. You're gonna add anything to it to mix up 2015? <laughs> yeah. In fact, I talked with my coach today about where I am now, how 2014 went, and how we can build on that for next year. And um, we came up with some really good ideas, um, most of which are very individualized to me as, a, as an athlete and act, you know, to my personality as well and how I deal with the stress of training both physically and emotionally. Um, so the, the workouts are going to be very similar to what they have been, but we're going to shorten up the, the training cycles because I think I deal better with that psychologically um, than I do having these really long, um, really intense training cycles where the stimulus isn't changed up all that much. So, mm. yeah, it's very it's very individualized to to me uh, as an athlete and as a person. Um, like Tim, I don't I don't know really what I'm going to be doing race wise next year. I have committed again to to Western States, so in all likelihood that'll be the number one focus. So. Um, based off that and the fact that I can train specifically to that race because I live close to the course and in a place with similar, um, you know, terrain, 
um, I should be able to prepare really well, like I like I did last year. So um, yeah, we'll see how the training changes. But either way, you know the the that race will will kind of be the goal. Tell us your thoughts about signing with the North Face as a, one of their global athletes. How how stoked were you when you found that out, or when that deal went down? Yeah, I mean it was a really you know amazing opportunity for me. Um, something that sort of started many, many months ago, and um, you know, when we finally sort of went public with it, it was relieving uh, and also a little bit stressful, you know, doing it right before the 50 mile championship race. But all my interactions with the people from the North Face have been, you know, just absolutely top notch. And obviously, knowing people like Tim Olson and you know, Mike Wolf, Mike Foot, Hal, Rory, all the all the people on the team, um, it gives me, you know, a lot of athletes who I look up to and also sort of consider friends, um, sort of on on the same on the same team. So from that perspective, I feel really really lucky, and um, you know, it's just the the next step for me in my career. It was the step I needed to take in order to keep improving and getting better and um, you know progressing. So. Um, yeah, I couldn't could be happier with it. Sage, what's your uh, year looking like next year? Do you have anything committed to? Uh, you didn't watch my interview with Brian Powell with Aaron Farr, did you? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, yeah, I got a UTMB 100 mile debut. Really? Uh, nice. Oh, is that confirmed? I interview either. I watch your guys. I, <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, it's I not 100. It's not 100 percent. Uh, but probably UTMB 100, and then uh, before that, probably Comrades in May. Woo! And then uh, my other big goal is to do uh, um, to get the marathon trials qualifier because that's always been on my radar, and it's the last year to do it. So really like to get that and uh, do the Olympic trials again for 2016. So those are the main goals, the uh, main big races I'm signed up for, and then uh, definitely uh, probably the North Face 50 again. Uh, I love that, love that course and race. How many, how many ultras did you run this year? So 50k and above. How many did you run? Um, I did Tarawera, Lake Sonoma, Trans uh Speed Goat, the Rut, uh, the Costa Rica North Face Challenge, uh, North Face, and Lake Templier. So eight. Eight. Do you, do you plan on about the same next year? Are you going to do less or more? Oh, I'm, I'm dialing back because. Uh, I think the the hundred will be a a huge challenge. It could be an epic blow up, epic disaster. And uh, you know, I've I've been going pretty much year round for uh, the last three years, uh, racing almost every month. So I think uh, I'll have to dial back and focus my efforts and you know peak when it counts more and specialize my training for these different races, whether it's the uh, a sub two eighteen marathon or it's uh, the hundred miler at UTMB. What do you expect in the uh, in marathon trials? What do you think you're capable of? Uh, the time wise or place wise yeah. or time wise. I, uh, the first goal is just to qualify. So uh, I'd be happy with anything under uh, a two eighteen. It's definitely it's not a walk in the park. Uh, it might take a couple of tries. So the first goal is just to qualify. Really. And Are where? You still where? Doing Houston? Um, I'm actually probably not going to do Houston because it's only five weeks away, and I don't think I have. I'm going to get my legs back under me in time. Uh, so I, I might extend it to, to L.A. in March, actually, now huh? is the plan. It's a U.S. Oh, championship, really? so um, I think that'll be a, a good opportunity. What about you, Tim? Are you looking for a trials call? That's my next question. Def Tim, you definitely next year going to do one. I was considering L.A. as well because it's the U.S. championships for 2015, but I'm also considering Way Too Cool 50K, which is the week before, so I kind of have to choose one or the other. And you're okay. leaning towards... I love Auburn, or I mean, I love Cool, that, that area. I've, I've run, grown up in that area. I've run the trails many a time, so. Well, then you I, should just run Western, dude. Definitely, yeah. I've run a lot of Western trails. No, he's, he's pacing me. Hush. I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll follow Alex out to Boston in April. Oh. Yeah, Varner, what are you looking like for next year? You've had a hell of a year. What are you looking like for 2015, Varner? Um, 
The first one that's kind of definitely on the radar is Lake Sonoma, and then Boston the week after. Um, <laughs> Woo! That was a fun double. Jesus, man. <laughs> um, all, all right, Wardian. <laughs> yeah, Wardian. <right. laughs> and then Big Sur the um, week after that, right? Yeah, right. I put, um, yeah, Big Sur, really. Um, I put my name in for Canyon's 100K in May. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I heard um, they already accepted you. They did. Or at least Ultra Sign Up says I'm in. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Western States, and then... Uh, I'm not sure after that. You want yeah, to focus on shorter stuff, longer stuff? What's your What do you want your emphasis to be? Uh, I don't know. The second half of the year, Club Cross Country Nationals are in San Francisco. Awesome. Thank you, Trail. Uh, <laughs> that'd be yeah, that'd be a great. I think I think we should convince if we want to take Gelfi's team scoring thing even further, we could have yeah. teams with Nora Face and then at Club Nationals. You heard it here first. Have the you same five first. guys have to run or something like that. Yep. That would really, they, they really mess with some people. Country. Hey, Hoka's uh, got some spikes out. So uh, that's right. That's yeah. right. And, and you, you, you can also six take four minute miners. David Torrance. Yeah, six guys yeah. that have run under four minutes for the mile on the Hoka yeah. squad. Is that right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Most of them are low three fifties at least. Yeah. Oh, What's the run like a little on those faster. Spikes? The what? Oh my God. What's the rocker like on those spikes? I, I <laughs> <haven't done> it <laughs> yet. It's fast. <laughs> I mean, no one else is here is in a contract here. You guys are staying with the same sponsors. I mean, I, I know Dylan, you switched over recently, but uh, no one's re-upping or changing teams here. Nope. 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 Yeah. nope. Nike's getting some fun. Some fun new athletes, and Hoka's getting some fun new athletes. There's some, there's some yeah. good movement going on. Nike's going to be real interesting to watch. Silence. I know it's all right. <laughs> I think, think it's going to be really interesting what happens with brands in our sport in the next two or three yeah. years. It and is. I think. I mean, we're going to see more movement here in the next two weeks um, or as soon as yeah. the year ends and some brands are, are getting out and more brands are getting in and I think you know with the emergence of the Nike team I think hopefully we'll see you know the bigger brands like Adidas and Asics and those uh, bigger sort of high you know big box store running brands moving into the sport as well and um, I don't know. It's gonna be gonna be interesting to see in the next couple of years. It's a good thing. I mean, they're the brands appear from my perspective to be fighting and uh, somewhat fighting over you guys. You know, offering offering contracts that Montreal can't afford anymore. So there's other other teams picking them up. That's a good that's a good sign all around. It's um it's all about sex appeal. I mean, that's why we it got is. Dylan. Dylan, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, we've just you up, see that, up, that up cross shot they threw up of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never stop exploring. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. I, I mean, uh, I'm I'm sorry if people had questions out there. We weren't able to take them. Um, I can't but... see them on the screen. If they're on the screen, I simply don't see them. No, no. This is uh, the group chat is just limited to us. So I'm talking about getting beans. Well, somebody's uh, probably going to want to know what's on Timmy's shoulder, so I'll ask that. Tim um, Olson, what the hell is on your shoulder? It's a weird growth. Um, you know, <laughs> you eat a lot of greens, and little elves start crawling, like, coming out <laughs> of your skin. Um, it's just my Christmas sweater. I felt like it's the holiday season. Happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. And figured I spent a lot for this damn Christmas tree that I would, uh, you know, use it for a background. Instead of all your lame ones, besides um, the nice curtains of Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Alex uses metals as curtains. <laughs> hey, Timmy, have you... A while, a guy comes over and just stares in the window at me. <laughs> Timmy, have you had a chance to uh, go on those uh, crazy mountain outings with uh, Anton and Joe yet? I've done absolutely nothing. It's, I have, um, it's been sad. Um, I've been going to just the gym. Um, 
kind of just kind of getting our lives back together here, letting my wife do the, the trail running thing, and I've been just uh, hitting up the gym. It's been great. Um, not at all. Um, what do you do? What do you do in the gym, Tim? Oh, uh, just some like some, some yeah, a lot, a lot of kegels. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean that's about it really. Um, I just kind of sit there. I pretend to read a, a book, but it's just kind of you know grunting. Uh, it's, a, it's a deep burn. <laughs> um, but no, I mean just like some upper body, just strengthening um, yeah. things. I do a lot of pull ups and stuff like that, and then just some biking. Um, just kind of I you know nothing really um, special. I, I go and go in the sauna and then like work on my legs. I've I've had a really good recovery um, after the race. Like I was like I was really damn sore a couple, like the couple days afterwards. I imagine most of us were, but the body healed up really quick. And um, to me, it's just kind of um, just reiterates like you know those 50 miles. Um, I, for me personally, I like to do like a 50 miler before 50 miler to kind of get my legs turning over like that, and then I can roll better kind of the next one. So I would I would I'd love another another shot at a 50, but I'm like trying to relax and just kind of take a month or two off, and um, I'll get back into it. And I guess the, there's 5K ch- championships or something I'm supposed to get ready for, right, uh, Alexander? I don't whatever <laughs> that that was. But I'll have to work on my 5K speed. So um, that's that's my goal for next year. 5Ks are rough. Yep. They are. I I did it in in high school, and yeah, they no really. Don't want to go back there. I just ran one on Saturday. A 5K. I got beat by a 17-year-old. So I got second to a 17-year-old. Welcome to <laughs> life. Hey, Sage. <laughs> but Sage, I, I know the uh, the North Face win, obviously, was, was huge. Uh, you called it your um, probably your biggest win in, in your yeah. non trail, trail running history. Um, do, you, do you feel like that kind of made this past year a successful one? Or had you not won, would you still have viewed your uh, past 2014 season a, a good year? Oh yeah, I was I was honestly already uh, really happy with my my 2014 season. Um, I definitely had some a lot of struggles and subpar races in there. Uh, but you know, just having my health most of the year and having the opportunities to actually uh, travel internationally and compete was just a a huge uh, positive. So. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was a a nice ending to a, a solid season, um, and uh, yeah, I, I couldn't be more happy. Really, I was I was very fortunate to be able to pull it off. Here's the thing, people I don't think quite fully appreciate or know about Sage is he is probably one of the fiercest competitors out there. I mean, you see his videos; he's he's this nice guy. You, you know, with now you're incorporating these goofy intros where you're playing the bass or uh, he's like in a black <laughs> costume, but. Man, Sage Sage gets after it when when the gun goes off. Not that the rest of the guys on the panel aren't, but he he just goes into like a really deep dark place. And um, kudos to you for cutting this out, dude. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a tough one. Really, I had to dig deep. And uh, yeah, once the the gun goes off, the competitive juices get flowing. Actually, even before the gun goes off, it's pretty much just tension all week building up. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just. You really pour my my uh, a lot of emotion into it and uh, give it everything I have. Pretty much every race. I mean, I I treat all the races I did this year as an A race. There are I don't do B races, so um, it was really taxing and exhausting. But uh, I think the the high level of competition in this race allows you to bring more out of yourself, and that's really the best thing. Is that because there's so much competition, because it's such an aggressive pace. Um, it allows you to really dig in the pain cave, and it motivates you to to push yourself even harder. So uh, it's it's good to be a part of. You and Timmy here are the only two full time athletes here on the panel. I believe Alex Devo and um, Tim. You all have full time jobs. Is there is there more pressure to succeed at these races, and you know, especially when there's prize money involved? Um, I mean, theoretically, there should be less pressure, really, because. Uh, you have so much support. I think sometimes it's, it's, uh, yeah, because I, I, I totally respect, like, I, I used to work in a shoe store a lot. I used to work in customer service. I've worked at Cold Stone Ice Cream before, and I've done uh, a lot of minimum wage jobs and worked on my feet and, uh, and run at the same time, and I, I know how exhausting and hard that is, and, like, I couldn't even imagine doing it with, uh, you know, a lot of you guys are married, and you have families, and, uh, kids to look after, plus a job, and 
uh, that balance to me is is really impressive. So like honestly, like I have it easy. Uh, like I I have time to train. I have time to rest and recover. Um, but it does create some pressure because it is your job, and so you start thinking of running. You know, for usually it's a it's a passion, it's a hobby, but then it's also like there's these financial incentives, and it's you know it's it's your I'm at work when I'm out running, but I never view it like that. But sometimes it crosses over, and I guess if you let it cross over too much, and there's not that balance there, it could definitely create uh, too much pressure. But uh, you know, I've been really fortunate and lucky, uh, so I. I really don't have anything to complain about like it definitely having the sponsor support is is huge and it, it definitely helps my running so um, I mean I, if you I think mentally you just have to have the right kind of balance and find balance in your own life and uh, you know do the best with the time that you have and uh, I've been given this opportunity to have the time to train so I'm just trying to take advantage of it now basically tell me what about you your sponsor <laughs> um, yeah, I'll touch on that. But first, I wanted to say, like, I I, I was really inspired by you, Sage, that um, to you know have Dakota get you, who's just a really strong ass runner, and you're throwing up, and to like go back and get him is awesome. Like, that's that's really almost impossible to do, and I think that's really awesome that you did that. So, congrats! Oh, Such an awesome you, year, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sure. and uh, I'm stoked for your UTMB too, going for the hundreds. I was wondering when you'd maybe pull the trigger on that and. I don't know why you chose UTMB for the <laughs> run on that one, but um, I, I think it's awesome, and uh, we'll have to get some runs in and uh, you know go get some verts and stuff. So oh uh, yeah, that's sure. cool. No, no, yeah. seeing you guys got it out there, got it out at Hard Rock. That was just uh, really uh, inspiring, and uh, I know it could easily be like this epic disaster meltdown type of thing. So uh, I'm looking forward to the the adventure and the the possibility of of that happening. But uh, I think. Uh, Chamonix is a beautiful place, and it's it's a it's a big race with lots of competition. So uh, hopefully, I could uh, be there and make it to the finish line. At this yeah. point, Sage, do you have any plans on going over you know weeks ahead of time, or what's do you want to live there for a while, like Schlarb did last year, or what? Oh yeah, like definitely. I'd, I'd train there for at least a month before. Okay. Hmm. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, guys, we're gonna. Uh, we're going to kind of wrap things down here. Uh, Eric, unless you had anything, I uh, just wanted to have one final question for each of these guys. So, Do you have anything else? What's your favorite beer? No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to go around, and uh, if you had to cast a vote, who would be, in your opinions, the ultra runner of the year on both the men and the women's side? Ooh, good question. North America, full world. North America. North America. North America. Barner, we'll start with you. Oh, and you can um, vote for yourself if you, you want. Vote for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not voting for myself. Um, I don't know. It's hard. Uh, I think. I mean, Carr kind of seems yeah. very uh, obvious and fitting choice, winning those three hundreds and you know placing second in Lake Sonoma. Um, on the men's side, that's probably who I give my vote to. On women's side, shoot, um, Magda had a pretty kick-ass year, uh, winning Cool and Cayuga and North Face. Um, I I might give it to her. Stephanie Howe, of course, is is also very deserving with high finishes at Lake Sonoma, winning Western and, and third at North Face. Um, so probably one one of those two. Again, we got my vote for the women's side. Debo. Yeah, good question. I, you know, as I said, I'm a huge fan of conversations like this. Um, I would, on the men's side, probably go with Max King. Um, Whoa. And I would, I would say it's, it'd be a toss-up between him and Rob Carr, and I'd give it to Max because Rob's already got one. <laughs> <laughs> Max is here. I mean, it's just insane to think yeah. about what he's done this year. Um, you know, starting at Chuck and Nut, a race he's tried to crush a few different times, finally getting the course record there, which was not a soft record that was held by David Laney. Then also getting the course record that's been held for like 25 years at Ice Age. Ice Age was nuts. Yep. And then also, and then in his debut 100 miler, coming in fourth in under 16 hours at Western States. 
and then following it up with a world championship at the 100K. Um, I mean, that's that's 50K, 50 mile, 100K, 100 mile. Um, that shows insane range. Well, let's not forget the uh, tough the mudder. Course, right? the, yeah, yeah, the Spartan race. race. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would definitely also consider that, although I'm not entirely sure that's legal in the voting process. But, I mean, Max's, Max's year is, I mean, I don't know if anybody's had a year like that with that kind of range. Um, so, and, and obviously Rob is, you know, you can't say enough about his, his year and his talent. Um, so between the two of those guys, I, I would say uh, you'd have your ultra runner of the year. On the women's side, I don't know, like, yeah, Stephanie Howe, Magda, both strong candidates. Um, Larissa Danis had a yeah. great year, too. Yeah. Um, I think, well, didn't she run, like, the American record for 50 miles, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Um, sub-six, sub-six. She was 5.59 yeah. or something. Uh, she's uh, also second at Western, um, and also a, a Marin County local. So um, I'd have to give more thought to the women's side, but uh, she would definitely deserve some consideration as well. Yeah, Sage, what about you? Uh, yeah, it's a tough. It's always a tough one. Uh, you made some good points with Max because I really like guys that mix up the distances. Um, but, you know, overall, Rob definitely, I think, should get it because 300s in the summer um, and then a close second at Lake Sonoma and then, you know, and finishing North Face on a what was obviously a really trying off day for him. Uh, you know, he, he really gutted it out to, yeah. to make the finish when he could have just stepped off the course. And I know he had some, uh, some other pain uh, injury type of thing going on too. Um, so definitely uh, Rob for the guys, but it, it would be close with Max too, because uh, yeah. he, he showed such a variety. Um, and then for for women, it's actually probably even harder. Um, I'd say like definitely, uh, well, Magda and, and Stephanie Howe, but I, it, since you said North America, not just the U.S., I'd almost put Ellie in there too, because winning Comrades, I think, is is oh, yeah. that's it's legit. And then she was still mixing it up at Speed Goat and the Rut. And I think, you know, that kind of range was really impressive to go to a technical sky running race and then also do these these road races. And um, So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'd give it to Magda, though, because she's a hokey athlete. but uh, And she, she deserves it, I think. But Ellie would be a very close uh, debate in that for sure. Tollison, do you know much about the sport to uh, weigh in on this? <laughs> what sport are we talking about? Yeah. I kind of I fell asleep there for a while. I think it's uh, mud wrestling. Oh, uh, mud Spartan wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I, I could yeah. lay out a top 15 for that. Yeah. Uh, I, For women, I, I would give it to Magda. I give it to a, a PA, PA local, and uh, just I've followed her career for a long time, and I think she had an amazing year. And then as Debo kind of stole... Exactly what I was thinking about Max. Uh, well played on your analysis. Uh, I just think he had a hell of a year. Minus he gets he gets minus points for me because he didn't throw in a steeplechase. So I'm a little disappointed in him in that <laughs> regard. But uh, I'd still give him the, the nod for for male athlete. Timmy. Yeah, I I mean I guess just the North Face team. <clears throat> See what I pick. <laughs> um, <no. laughs> um, I, I feel like Stephanie had a really um, amazing year, a couple of really good runs, and also uh, which you haven't mentioned, but uh, Rory um, back to back at UTMB, incredible um, against yeah. like Nur Nuria and um, uh, you know a, a stream of other really amazing um, athletes. So um, that that run there back to back is pretty damn incredible. Um, so I, I really um, respect uh, her a lot as well. And and then, you know, uh, Rob and Max are definitely good uh, candidates. I think uh, um, Sage also had a really amazing year. And, um, yeah, but, I mean, Rob um, definitely nailed out some really good ones. And um, and then I guess him and Max, too, having that versatility to, like, be able to, you know, do the sh 50 miles to 100K to 100 miles is really impressive. Um and back to Rob 300s in a row um, is, yeah, is a wild feat as well. So I'm not going to pick anybody, but I think there are some really amazing performances yeah. out there. Eric, what about you? I, I know you have opinions on this. 
Well, we're talking to a John Medinger tomorrow about this tropical John on uh, on URP. We're doing a year end wrap up, so it's been it's been at the f been in my mind a lot, and I'm going with Devo as well. That um, Max and just the diversity. <clears throat> I mean, going to you know, I, I watched him at an obstacle course race in Texas, jump through a damn tire <laughs> at minute pace. Um, you know, he can do that, and he's getting the hundred k championships on frickin' tile and running mountain stuff. Um, yeah. And then again, Larissa Dennis, I think. Um, Although she didn't win everything, she's showing the most potential for 2015. I think she's going to kill it. Um, but Sage, I got to give Sage had a hell of a year too, man. I yeah. mean, oh, you know, when you, uh, you know, coming, I, I hate to, I'm not a, I'm not a Killian fanboy, but coming in second to Killian is almost like coming in first sometimes because it's, you know, most definitely, it's, most definitely, yeah. Uh, uh, no, he kicked my butt in like 10 minutes at the ride. <laughs> it wasn't very close. <laughs> that was a, that was a hell of a year. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with. Max and yeah, Stephanie is fantastic. It's a great year all around. Very, very uh, interesting year for for mountain ultra trail running. Present company included too. I mean, God, Farner. Oh Jesus! And his first year out. <laughs> Three ultras on your belt. Four ultras. What do you have? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take off your shoes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Devo's Sage, Halston. Um, Tolleson has a, cu a couple of 50k wins under his belt, and Timmy, of course, just cutting it out at Hard Rock. I mean, I can I can, mm -hmm. I can totally geek out and talk about performance yeah. up here too, and and the Zach Millers at Sonoma, Max King at the 100k, Larissa Danis. I mean, there's so many to choose from, but yeah, That's crazy. Um, yeah. tune into URP for that. I think uh, now's a good point to kind of uh, say goodbye. I I, I want to say thank you to everyone who tuned in, watched the video, and and for creating a forum for us to do this and have a conversation. I hope you, it was mildly amusing, especially when uh, Alex was heating up his beans. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Simple Hydration for coming on board and, and um, you know, help support the people who are supporting us. Um, thank you for them. They make a great product. I know Timmy uses it. I know a couple of other people in here use it. I know bottle. Anton uses it. I use it. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's a great yeah. product. Um, great product. make a great stocking stuffer, so. Um, yeah, and... Uh, Eric, who am I missing, or what am I missing? I think we got it all, man. We got hey, everybody. We asked them the one tough questions. One last thing. Thanks, Billy, for making an amazing film. Yeah. That was really, yeah. really cool to I'm see. Gonna, I'm going to go watch it. Eric, <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks for providing good uh, ultra content for us to geek out on during slow work days. And, uh, <laughs> Thank bros, you. Bros, good to see you. Yeah, all thank righty. you so much, guys. Really yeah, see you on the trails. Awesome. Right, thanks again, guys. Nice talk, bros.